If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout there has been one refrain that i keep seeing in my comments section or in my emails and other places that people choose to ask this basic question where is cardinal burke for whatever reason cardinal burke has been and remains the sort of de facto figurehead leader of the mainline resistance to Francis. And I say mainline because the traditional Catholics have an interesting relationship with Cardinal Burke. A lot of traditional Catholics are completely flabbergasted by Cardinal Burke's continued insistence that Vatican II was fine and that it was its implementation that was the problem. We remain flabbergasted that Cardinal Burke takes the position that he does with the Society of St. Pius X, going further than any pope ever did and had declaring them to be schismatics. The SSPX were never declared to be in schism, but Cardinal Burke re insists that they are. He has taken a number of positions that, are, that just leave us scratching our heads about the nature of the crisis in the church, and perhaps most profoundly in all of this, he rarely says anything about what goes on in Rome. And when he does, it's typically at private groups and it's not in a way that recognizes the informal position he has taken with the resistance to Francis among conservative and traditional Catholics. So it does beg the question, where is Cardinal Burke? The last thing we heard from him was in the aftermath of meeting with Francis. He had a face-to-face -face meeting with Francis at the height of the news coming out that he had lost his offices there, and I say offices meaning office space there, that he was going to be expected to pay market rate for his apartment, which is his office. He has a magnificent, huge office there, and it really is an office. It's Yes, it's an apartment, but he has employees who work in there for him. And the market rate was more than the money he was getting from the Vatican as part of his the compensation cardinals receive for being in not working in the Vatican. He was going to be paying market price, which means he was not going to have any money. So he has chosen to move out of there. We have heard nothing since then, other than that he had a face-to-face -face meeting with Francis, in which the only thing he said in response when asked how it went was, I'm still alive. And anybody knows who anyone who's ever had a meeting with the boss that didn't go well, if their response when asked how it went was, well, I'm still alive, is usually a sign that it didn't go terribly well. We've heard very little, if anything, from Cardinal Burke since then. And so there is an interesting open letter was published to Cardinal Burke, and it completely was missed by everybody. It was published on the Catholic Monitor several days ago, and I came across it just now. So here it is. It was written by an unnamed Vatican expert who actually managed to meet with Francis, and in the aftermath of that meeting with Francis, is now asking, where is Cardinal Burke? And he has this open letter. And he's basically asking in this open letter to recognize that there was something wrong with the election of Francis, that Cardinal Burke and other cardinals need to get together and investigate to see if the conclave that elected Francis was invalid or not. It's open-ended. There are many, many ways to discover if it was open, if it was valid or not. For those of you who hold to the Munis versus Ministerium thesis of, of Dr. Ed Mazza about Benedict being the true pope, or the Impeded C thesis of Andrea Concini, and there's many others. We know that Cardinal Godfrey De Niels, before he passed away, told everybody gloatingly that they violated the rules of the conclave to elect Francis by politicking at the conclave, which they're not supposed to do. Rules set forth by John Paul II, never abrogated by Benedict XVI, that said, if you engage in politicking at the conclave, you invalidate the conclave. And they admitted that they did that. There's a whole lot of ways they could get to answering that question of whether the, the 
conclave was invalid or not. And of course, the basic question is, do if those rules are broken, does it truly invalidate a conclave? Many of you would say yes, because on its face, John Paul II made rules for this, and we're in, in his rules, he said if this rule is broken, it invalidates a conclave. But again, we have a hierarchical church. The hierarchy needs to actually act and do something. And so here's this open letter. It could almost be seen as an open letter to all the cardinals of the church of, where are you? Why are you letting this continue? So here's the open letter to Cardinal Burke. The impassioned statement is titled, End the Bergoglio Borgata. The persistent silence of the College of Cardinals and the bishops signifies their cowardice and neutrality. They invoke omerta in the face of the Bergoglio Borgata, which has kneecapped the Catholic Church, decimating it with modernism and secular populism. The cardinals seemingly choke with fear as Francis supplants the magisterium with his own doctrinal brand of liberation theology. They watch silently as he guts the FFI, the Knights of Malta, the Pontifical Academies, and stacks the College of Cardinals with his liberal lackeys to ensure that Francis Minions dominate the chair of Peter for generations. How often have we heard cardinals, bishops, and priests whisper, we will wait Francis out, he is old and he has only one lung. How is that strategy working? How much more destruction are you willing to endure, silently watching, remaining neutral in this time of moral crisis in the Catholic Church? Remember the words of St. Cajetan, you must resist the Pope who openly destroys the Church. While the clerics sit on the sidelines, the laity is not content to watch Rome burn during this papacy, knowing that the true scandal is not the vociferous criticism of Francis. The real scandal is the papacy of Jorge Bergoglio and the complicit silence of the hierarchy. And questions persist about the hierarchy. Is there a real man left in the Vatican to speak up and save Holy Mother Church from this disastrous papacy? Is it too much to ask you to lay down your riches, titles, and honor at the end of your earthly lives for Holy Mother Church? Are you content to be made a laughingstock with your dubia demand which goes ignored and unanswered? Are there any men in the College of Cardinals left who are willing to fight for Holy Mother Church, like the legions of men in the traditional Catholic blogosphere? Knowing that the St. Gallen group and schemed the spurious election of Bergoglio, why would you, the Cardinals, passively condone his scandalous appointments, his heretical pronouncements, and his tyrannical firings without speaking out in united protest? It's time to break the code of silence. Show up time has long since passed. Time to put on your big boy pants and blow the lid off this modernist and heretical papacy. The resistance is upon us. What does the resistance look like? The dubia demand offered hope and clarity, but unanswered remains a hollow threat. Creativity, bravery, and prayer are required to launch an offensive to save our church. Bergoglio is increasingly vulnerable, exposed, and obviously flawed. The time is long over this to stop protecting this papal wrecking ball who scandalizes the faithful every time he opens his mouth. Who could forget the merciful Francis who haughtily chastised Cardinal Mueller? I am the Pope. I don't have to give you reasons for firing your three best, best priests from the CDF. Hardly the conciliatory and humble words of a man who espouses dialogue and consultation. As Aesop cautioned, any excuse will serve a tyrant. Time to shed the comfort of your mitre, your title, and your coat of arms. Have you forgotten that Dante warned that the darkest places in hell are reserved for those who maintain their neutrality in times of moral crisis? In the words of St. Catherine of Siena, Proclaim the truth and don't be silent through fear. Pray an Our Father now for reparation for the sins committed because of Francis's Amoris Laetitia. Pray an Our Father now for the restoration of the Church as well as the triumph of the Kingdom of the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Stop for a moment of silence. Ask Jesus Christ what he wants you to do now and next. In this silence, remember God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three divine persons, yet one God, has an ordered universe where you can know truth and falsehood, as well as never forget that he wants you to have eternal happiness with him as his son or daughter by grace. Make this a practice. By doing this, you are doing more good than reading anything here or anywhere else on the internet. That letter concludes with a list of various links to statements from doctors of the church saying that not only is a pope ipso facto no longer pope if he is a heretic but that the church must declare him deposed you get quotes there with citations to saint francis de sales saint robert bellarmine and some others there's also a whole host of links to the various different statements from lay theologians and bishops and others pleading with the hierarchy to do something may who where they all make their case about the invalid status of Francis, at least in their eyes. So again, where is Cardinal Burke? Where are the good bishops? You would think the fiducia supplicants would have been the breaking point, 
After all, virtually every good bishop in the church is united against the, that satanic document, and one has to really be willfully blind to read that document and think everything is fine. But one wonders, where is Cardinal Burke? Where are the good bishops? I know it's a hard thing to ask them to do. But that is why cardinals and bishops wear red. I'm curious what you have to say about this, so let me know in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.